Okay, so I'm extremely glad to be here to uh, share with you some stuff I find interesting. And so I've been studying this stuff for years and trying to keep up with the research, but I'm uh, so still helped. Um, so is Michael. So I'm um, keeping this as brief as possible. So uh, this top here, the first slide, so here's the solar cycle 24 on the right hand side there. Um, it's quite, quite a bit lower on the season cycle. And that's basically the update. Is your microphone on? Just so it's. Uh, looks like it's switched on. Yeah. Is that better? Okay. Okay, so in that case, I'll bump on to the second slide. So I'll just, uh, I thought I'd talk about a few uh, uh, the details I tried to throw in in some order here, but I'm keeping it brief, so I'll skip over here as quickly as possible. I mean, sunspot and some cycles and a few other little details. And so if this advancer works, if it does, um, if you can advance to the next slide, that'd be really ideal too, since this doesn't work. Uh, okay, so I just didn't know how much I ought to say about sunspots, since most people are quite familiar with it, but. Uh, so they're quite visible in a small telescope, and the right-hand image here uh, gives the impression of uh, through a small telescope that you could see, even with these um, eclipse viewers glasses, a big enough sunspot would show up uh, visible to the eye without a telescope, and a nice sketch on the bottom left there. So a lot of details about sunspots that I won't dwell on too much. Okay. Um, uh, so um, there's quite a lot of details on any, any particular day in the sun, and this particular image shows a few more details than you would see by, um, by looking through a telescope. But, so this is um, about a week ago, and... Here's some sunspots as well as coronal holes and a lot of other interesting features on the sun, um, which I won't dwell on. Um, I just mentioned that uh, between a solar maximum and so solar minimum, quite a difference in, in the number of details that are on the sun and active regions especially. So um, keeping it brief to, um, to minimize dwelling on, on any particular detail, some sunspots are uh, caused by magnetic fields, and so magnetic fields suppress the upwelling of fresh material, and so it's a relatively cool spot that appears dark. So. Some cartoon here is a pretty good explanation. If we uh, dwelt on it, we could explain more details. And speaking of more details, there are quite a bit more details if you want to look into it. So sunspots by themselves are pretty darn interesting. But the main point is they appear dark. And um, I think all that matters for the presentation here is that I'm talking about uh, numbers of sunspots that you would count. And so um, if we count them each day and plot them each day through the month, we'd get a graph sort of like this for June last month. And so quite a variation from um, one week to the next. And so. Um, there's about half a dozen of my observations in this one here, but this is compiled by the AAVSO solar section and um, quite a variation. And the um, main point is that when you uh, compile these um, into uh, weekly or monthly numbers and then compile them year by year, you get quite a, a periodic uh, variation showing up. And this is the past 17 years. So you see cycle 24 is on the right there. Second half of cycle 23 is on the left. And you see at a glance that there's quite a difference in the size of the cycle. So. Uh, just at a glance, cycle 24 is quite a bit weaker or less intense than the previous few solar cycles, or at least cycle 23 that you see in the left. Um, also, within any particular crest of a peak, there's uh, ups and downs and variations, and uh, cycle 24 was exciting by itself just having a double peak. So it's, uh, it's a very new um, sign, it's just when uh, people thought they understood solar cycles, um, this cycle 24 is really throwing a curved ball or quite a surprise. And so, uh, so if we um, look at other details, we can plot other details, and you may or may not see the yellow lines, and they don't show up very well, but they're daily plots of solar intensity. And so solar intensity varies quite a bit. So does 10.7 centimeter radial flux and solar flare index. They all vary uh, with the uh, solar cycle along with sunspots, and so quite a lot of variations. I'll show a few more a bit later, but um, not to dwell on too many details, the sun is very interesting with this output varying quite a bit. Now that's all relative because you see a difference of on a left-hand scale, one watt per, per square meter over about 1,366 isn't really a lot, but it is, um, in some sense, it's quite a variation. So if you plot even longer time scales, in this case back to 1983, um, a 30-year period, we see um, several solar cycles and quite a variation of uh, top graph shows sunspot number, which I was showing you earlier. Um, uh, if we plot cosmic rays, we see that they're different because at, at a weaker uh, sunspot cycle, more cosmic rays from background galaxy can penetrate into the solar system. And the um, various um, cosmic ray um, and neutron monitors around the world can, can measure these and pick up a periodic cycle as well. There are more uh, can be measured by uh, satellite um, X-rays, ghost proton events that go satellite, which is uh, well outside of Earth's orbit, and solar wind details, and various other details that all uh, cycle with solar cycles and change um, quite a bit. Here's an example. I threw in this chart to show on the top, anyway, solar wind speed. And this is uh, sort of relevant. You see with the uh, solar cycle plotted in the dashed lines, you see that near the uh, peaks of the uh, solar cycle, um, shortly after that, a few years after that, is a peak of solar wind speeds at Earth. 
this is some relevance if you like to watch Aurora and you see that there's quite a few disturbances on the downside or second half of a solar cycle. It's because solar winds or wind speeds are faster than, anyways, a lot, loads of interesting details just in this one picture, which I won't dwell on. Um, so if you plot a few more cycles, you see that in relation to the past two cycles, we're really in a, a down going uh, trend from um, the past uh, 20 to 30 years with several solar cycles plotted. You see quite a big difference from um, the huge uh, cycle in 1991, the major solar maximum period we had then down to the current solar cycle, quite a, quite a uh, strong trend. So some people plot um, uh, how does our current solar cycle, although it's very unusual, compare with past, some past solar cycles, and it looks like it's fairly similar when they plot it with uh, cycles that happened nearly 100 years ago. And so um, you see uh, along with the double crest of the uh, sol solar peak and the um, uh, several cycles that it's familiar with, people try to use that to forecast what will happen next, because it's basically unforecastable at this point. Um, at the start of cycle 24, people were trying to forecast and predict how long this would last, and um, the strength and some predictions were for a very strong solar cycle 24. Others were for a weak one, and you can see it's turned out to be a weak one. Um, plot at longer periods, you see uh, quite a cyclic variation, and you see over several hundred years, you can probably pick out several different cycles. There's a Gleisberg cycle, as it's called, around 90 year cycle, and another cycle that's around 220 years, so called Sioux cycle. And um, we plot even longer uh, trends. Um, I think I have one here. Uh, it's a similar sort of plot. Um, Again, uh, the, the past one has been being referred to now as a grand maximum. And you may be familiar with the Maunder minimum that occurred back around 1600s when uh, sunspot observations began with Galileo. And uh, there was a period of very low sun, uh, sunspot activity for quite a few years. Uh, another period uh, called the uh, Dalton minimum. But, um, the main point of this presentation that I find very interesting is that nearly all solar astronomers now agree that we're heading toward another uh, grand solar minimum, as it's called. So a grand solar minimum is following this grand maximum, and it looks like we're headed into a period of very low solar activity in the next 50 years or so. Um, so um, let me bump it ahead. I think I had a longer period. Uh, this just shows a different perspective of um, um, how we compare with this uh, current solar cycle 24 with some past uh, periods. But again, you can see that there are some uh, cyclic variations in very weak solar cycles and very strong solar cycles in the past hundreds of years. Um, here's a plot of uh, 11,000 years uh, for the sunspot number of reconstruction. You can say, you could argue, who was uh, watching sunspots 11,000 years ago? And nobody, of course, but um, uh, hopefully nobody, but the, um, uh, it's been reconstructed with uh, cosmic gray um, uh, isotope, um, beryllium isotopes, and tree ring data that have been found to be fairly, uh, fairly uh, reputable for, give, for estimating sunspot numbers. So you see at a glance where we are on the right hand side there, it's been um, much stronger in the past and also, also has been fairly weak at some years and some periods in the past too. Um, butterfly diagram, um, uh, quite a lot of detail here. I think I'll skip it due to time, but uh, basically it shows at a glance that if you pick any one uh, solar cycle, the minimum of uh, the cycle is coincides with the start of a new cycle and uh, sunspots appear, you see on the left hand side of any particular peak, they appear at higher latitudes, around 30 degrees latitude on the sun is um, relatively high latitude. And as the solar cycle progresses, the, the sunspots appear more and more at uh, equatorial latitudes. And also plots the area too, so you may be able to pick out the area uh, marked off in the top right, but it doesn't show up very well here. But um, it's a nice uh, effect butterfly diagram, as that's called. Um, uh, one other detail that's really worth dwelling on to some, uh, for a moment at least is the um, solar polar magnetic field strength. And this has been measured since about the 1970s since magnetograms were fitted on certain observatories, especially at Mount Wilcox in California, for um, measuring the um, polar magnetic field strength of the sun. And so the point here is that they've been gradually decreasing. So you see several solar cycles, and the polar um, field strengths have been gradually decreasing. And this is one strong piece of evidence why um, solar astronomers are now convinced that we're heading into a solar minimum, a grand solar minimum. And if I get this to advance to the next slide, um, if it starts to work. Um, we'll see that the, um, well, we might be out of luck. Uh, so there are a few other details I didn't want to dwell on too much. Um, there's a lot of other details. In this case, here are some papers about the um, uh, sunspot cycle coinciding with uh, inner heliospheric uh, turbulence levels measured in solar plasma and chromospheric emission, um, also uh, leading to the same conclusion. And this one was about, uh, oh, somebody put together a forecast for the next 500 years. And so um, there are two forecasts here. Uh, one's in the, um, uh, darker gray ones in the 
fainter gray, if you can see it, I can barely see it from here, but depending on how somebody manipulates statistics and bins, averages and so on. But uh, So uh, one point is that we, we seem to be fairly convinced that we're heading into a strong minimum for about the next 50 years. And then after that, could it recover for the next 500 years or could get even lower, according to these predictions. So I thought that's a little interesting because that's also fairly well accepted now by um, most of the uh, solar, uh, solar physics uh, papers that I see every day. Um, and so um, here's another paper which I won't dwell on due to time. Uh, so I could say, um, is there any use for this and who really cares? And that's a good question. Does anybody here care? <laughs> ah, good, glad to see a few people here. Yeah. So it's pretty important because it connects with the Earth. And so uh, magnetic fields connect with the Earth. And there's a lot of details here which you can uh, look into because it's pretty interesting. Um, a lot of effects on, uh, on planet Earth and um, a lot of commerce uh, gets strongly affected by solar uh, activity. So I won't dwell on any of these. Um, I'll just finish off pointing out that um, sunspot numbers are pretty interesting and they're the basis of the cycles that I've been pointing out. And so um, I know this year, especially a lot of people are getting some uh, solar telescopes. And so, um, so I say, from what source? And these come from observers. And so can you contribute? So I'm finishing off with, finishing off with this one little detail that you can, if you want, contribute to this. And so. Um, the AAVSO is one group, solar division. Um, there's other groups as well that collect and compile sunspot numbers, but it means that amateur astronomers can go and view the sun every day that they have and a few days a month or uh, a few days per week and uh, count sunspots and submit them. And collectively, these uh, can be combined to form the official sunspot numbers. So there are a lot of people with pretty fancy equipment who may not use it anymore after August, um, unfortunately, possibly so, but it could be put to use and People might find it really, really interesting uh, looking at the sun every day just to count sunspots. Um, and so um, to do that, if they want to contribute to the AAVSO, uh, if we get to the next slide, which would be, I think, the second last slide, so it doesn't want to work, I'll just have to talk about it. Um, so the point is that um, uh, to contribute sunspots to the AAVSO, as one example, you know, there's a manual online for how to do it. So there's a good little technique for to how to follow uh, certain procedures to um, contribute sunspots that will be countable toward official sunspot number. So this is a free downloadable guide that you can check out. Um, anyway, I finished off that little detail about how you can contribute if you want to. So um, to finish off, I'll just, I've skipped a lot of details I know, but we're keeping it short on time. So um, I'm just finishing off by saying again, there are a lot of interesting trends going on and it's, um, uh, it's uh, still ongoing, interesting every day. And this final solar cycle that we're in right now um, is really full of surprises and it's worth studying for, see if we really do get into a grand solar minimum um, after this uh, current solar cycle ends around the year 2019 or 2020. We'll see what happens then. So um, I'll keep following it. Okay, thanks for your time. All you do, Scott.